Hey you guys, I was thinking about something and I thought it was worth talking about on here, but um, I'm kind of like just going with the flow of the thoughts, okay? So we'll, we'll just see where this goes. <laughs> um, I was thinking about how when you reach a state of being surrendered and there are different levels and layers of being surrendered to. So just keep that in mind. Um, but when you reach a state of it where you no longer feel like that need for your twin to be happy, it's a very strange feeling if you like stop and think about it. Because what it's got me thinking about is that I think that for a lot of people, they confuse feeling that need for someone and honestly any this could be anyone it doesn't even have to be a twin flame but they confuse feeling like they need someone need to be with someone in order to be happy they confuse that with love and that's something that's really like kind of standing out to me at this exact moment um because that's a huge difference right um when you no longer feel like you need to be with your twin in order to like survive and be happy and all those things, um, it's, it's freeing in a way, but that's because of it, that, that feeling is like a codependent thing. I mean, it's very, it's very difficult to talk about this actually pertaining to twin flames because of how the concept, the 3D concepts and the 5D concepts mix together and sometimes contradict each other. But yeah, I don't even know exactly how to say it. <laughs> because, because with your twin flame, because of the fact that they are, you know, part of you, a part of your soul, your other half, and all that <laughs> that's why you know you feel like you need them so badly and you feel that ache for them you know it's when you're feeling that need and that ache so much you're tapping into the separation wound from when you were separated from each other you know that it could be, could have been at the fall of atlantis it could have been um, when the soul split occurred. It could be both. <laughs> um, but that's definitely what you're tapping into when you feel that. So that is normal because of being a twin flame and just how, the, just the facts and whatnot about twin flames. Like how you exist, having the soul split, have being separated. Um, that is just a fundamental aspect of being a twin flame. So that makes sense. But that is the part that contradicts the 3D concepts of codependency and whatnot, because that is a wound that we're supposed to heal. So at the same time as feeling that ache for your twin is, um, is a sign of being a twin, because of the soul split and the separation wound and the needing each other because it's your other half. At the same time, it's also a codependency wound and an attachment wound that needs to be healed. So <laughs> it gets confusing when you're like differentiating these things. But, um, but it's a completely normal, natural part of the process and the journey to heal those wounds so I actually find it very interesting when I reflect on myself and my journey because I didn't think that I was codependent or um, codependency is goes along with the anxious ambivalent attachment disorder. And I didn't think I was anxious ambivalent. I thought I was avoidant because um, of not really seeking out relationships unless like I could go into stories about this, <laughs> but it has to be like, the right person it has to feel right otherwise I don't um but now I'm realizing that I basically I have disorganized attachment disorder which is that I have both I sometimes I will show anxious ambivalent sometimes I will show avoidant um characteristics 
So that makes sense to me actually now reflecting back on my whole life. <laughs> um, but anyway, so attachment disorders are like a huge part of what is healed over the course of the twin flame journey. And so those codependency tendencies and feeling that need, like you need to be with this person in order to be happy, um, that is something that does get healed over the course of the journey. And spirit does want us to reach that point of heal, healing and surrender where we recognize that we, we can be happy, you know, independently. We can be successful independently. We can take care of ourselves independently. We don't need anybody else, let alone, like, we don't need our twin and we don't need anybody else, basically. Um, now, that doesn't mean that you aren't going to come into uni. It doesn't mean that you don't want your twin. It just simply means that you are okay on your own. And you want to be with your twin because you love them so much and it's a love that there are no words for, um, but you don't need them in order to be happy. You get what I'm saying? So so you do reach that healed state. So then, then going back to what I was saying at the beginning, when you reach that state and you're in that state of surrender where you no longer feel that need and it's just a want and a desire out of the pure, complete eternal, unconditional love, it feels different. Um, the, the need, when you feel that, when you feel the need and you feel the ache for your twin, it's all consuming. When you are in that state of surrender, the love is, is huge, but it's not all consuming because the wound when you're feeling that, it's like it takes over your mental and emotional capacities. But when you're healed and you're okay, and you don't have that need anymore, and it's just, you know, it's just purely coming from the love and the the desire and the passion <laughs> and the want, <laughs> um, it's, it's not that, I mean, it might be all consuming at times when you see each other, <laughs> but other than that, like just in day to day life, it's not that um, overwhelming feeling anymore. So you can be have moments where you feel like, like I would be okay, you know, I, I don't need this person like that actually. <laughs> and like I said, I, I think it's a key point that people confuse that need feeling with love. And I think that's, that's the source of many bad relationships, probably for, you know, karmic relationships and just other relationships that aren't soulmate or twin flame relationships. Um, people who have that codependency and feel that need and they think that it means it's love, but it's not love. <laughs> but anyway, um, but yeah, when you get to that state of detachment and surrender, you know, I think that they, because you feel so okay, you might even at times feel almost like it's um not a betrayal to your twin, but like to even consider the possibility of like, you know, what if we didn't come together, I would be okay. It's okay. I'm okay. <laughs> um, it can almost feel like a betrayal to some extent. But it's not. It's just simply a representation of that you're you're that much okay now. You're that healed now. Um, but yeah, I just think it, it's a very interesting feeling. Oh, and the other thing that I was going to say, I just remembered. Oh, good. I have one minute left to get this point out. <laughs> um, my other, the other thing that I wanted to point out with this is even though you get to that state and you know you would be okay, and I think a lot of people convince themselves that they don't need their twin anymore. They can just be platonic or they can just live separate lives. They're still doing their spiritual work, whatever. Union is still important and you still have to believe in union. You still have to have the intention of coming together in physical union. And the reason why is because the twins together with that, with, with the way their power and frequency rises so significantly in physical union that is what assists with ascension. Yes, the individual paths are important, but the union is also important. So don't forget that, even though you might reach that state where you, you're okay. Don't give up on union. Union is still important. If you did give up on union, then there's still something that needs to be healed as well. So keep that in mind also.